Of course, we have seen a significant underperformance uh, in, in regional stocks across Asia Pacific in the first half. Uh, does that give you more room for optimism when it comes to these semi names? Because at the same time, we of course have these uh, geopolitical tensions around the industry as well. Over the medium term, certainly, we are constructive on the tech hardware names in general, the Korean and Taiwanese semi and memory, for two reasons. Number one, the new source of demand, which is arising from AI and related applications, we think that's likely to be sustainable in the medium to long term. Second, um, as a consequence of the capacity cuts that we had seen earlier, the supply-demand balance in many segments of memory and semis are likely to be more favorable for producers over the next, um, you know, possibly maybe with a short time lag, maybe in the, from the fourth quarter of this year, but after that for the foreseeable time horizon. So uh, we are clearly more in favor of that universe than we were about six months ago. And therefore our allocation to the TMT segment in the Asia model portfolio has actually increased. Manishi, we continue to see this sort of negative news flow when it comes to China-related news, even in this sector, for example, more perhaps chip export restrictions mm -hmm. and whatnot. So um, do you right. find any opportunities in, in China, whether in this sector or, or other sectors, given, of course, the downside there? Our stance in China can actually be summarized in three English words. Constructive but selective. And that's exactly how we are approaching China. We think the, um, there's a strong uh, rationale for policy stimulus supporting consumption, and that can come through in the form of larger infrastructure investments, um, you know, more incentives at a second round of urbanization. You know, but consequently, the sectors that would benefit are the consumer discretionaries and a pretty broad swathe of, uh, you know, of the consumer discretionaries, which encompass both urban consumption and the tourism-related sectors. Second, we also like the SOEs, the government-owned companies in China. And one strong reason behind that is that they are the ones who provide a very strong, very high dividend yield. And that's an important theme that we are p playing across Asia. So some of the uh, government-owned banks, the oil companies, um, even some of the tech companies and you know, um, some other sectors like telecommunication, um, they find space in our model portfolio. Do you think momentum meaningfully changes when we finally do get stimulus being announced or would that have been priced in already? Um, you know, there was actually a strong talk and strong expectation of stimulus getting built in um, earlier in June. Then that sort of fizzled out after the 10 basis points MLF cuts because the market felt that that was inadequate. We think that a broader um, set of announcements are likely to be made in late July or early August, around the time of the uh, policy meetings, the Politburo economic meetings. And um, you know, I think uh, you know, that's really what the market is waiting for, a more coordinated approach. There we could see some degree of you know, what's called the buy on rumor and sell on news phenomenon arising there. But there are some stocks and some sub-segments of sectors that would have a longer-term sustained benefit as a consequence. And given the valuations are cheap in many of these sectors, I think over the medium term, investors can make money selectively in those sectors and stocks.